yet I was not of the number of those who could enter into it, or bend my neck to follow its steps. For then it was quite different from what I now feel. When I then turned toward the scriptures, they appeared to me to be quite unworthy to be compared with the dignity of Tully. For my inflated pride was repelled by their style, nor could the sharpness of my wit penetrate their inner meaning. Truly, they were of a sort to aid the growth of little ones, but I scorned to be a little one, and swollen with pride, I looked upon myself as fully grown. Chapter 6 Thus I fell among men, delirious in their pride, carnal and voluble, whose mouths were the snares of the devil, a trap made of the mixture of the syllables of thy name and the names of our Lord Jesus Christ and of the paraclete. These names were never out of their mouths, but only as sound and the clatter of tongues, for their heart was empty of truth. Still they cried, Truth, Truth, and were for ever speaking the word to me, but the thing itself was not in them. Indeed, they spoke falsely not only of thee, who truly art the truth, but also about the basic elements of this world, thy creation. And, indeed, I should have passed by the philosophers themselves, even when they were speaking truth concerning thy creatures, for the sake of thy love, O highest good, and my Father, O beauty of all things beautiful. O truth, truth, how inwardly even then did the marrow of my soul sigh for thee, when, frequently and in manifold ways, in numerous and vast books, sounded out thy name, though it was only a sound. And in these dishes, while I starved for thee, they served up to me in thy stead the sun and moon, thy beauteous works, but still only thy works, and not thyself, indeed, not even thy first work, for thy spiritual works came before these material creations, celestial and shining though they are. But I was hungering and thirsting, not even after those first works of thine, but after thyself, the truth, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Yet they still served me glowing fantasies in those dishes, and truly, it would have been better to have loved this very sun, which at least is true to our sight, than those illusions of theirs which deceive the mind through the eye. And yet, because I suppose the illusions to be from thee, I fed on them, not with avidity, for thou didst not taste in my mouth as thou art, and thou wast not these empty fictions, neither was I nourished by them, but was instead exhausted. Food in dreams appears like our food awake, yet the sleepers are not nourished by it, for they are asleep. But the fantasies of the Manichaeans were not in any way like thee, as thou hast spoken to me now. They were simply fantastic and false. In comparison to them, the actual bodies which we see with our fleshly sight, both celestial and terrestrial, are far more certain. These true bodies, even the beasts and birds perceive as well as we do, and they are more certain than the images we form about them. And again, we do with more certainty form our conceptions about them, than from them we go on by means of them, to imagine of other greater and infinite bodies which have no existence. With such empty husks was I then fed, and yet was not fed. But thou, my love, for whom I longed in order that I might be strong, neither art those bodies that we see in heaven, nor art thou those which we do not see there. For thou hast created them all, and yet thou reckonest them not among thy greatest works. How far, then, 
art thou from those fantasies of mine, fantasies of bodies which have no real being at all. The images of those bodies which actually exist are far more certain than these fantasies. The bodies themselves are more certain than the images, yet even these thou art not. Thou art not even the soul, which is the life of bodies. And clearly the life of the body is better than the body itself. But thou art the life of souls, life of lives. Having life in thyself and never changing, O life of my soul. Where then was thou, and how far from me? Far indeed was I wandering away from thee, being barred even from the husks of those swine whom I fed with husks. For how much better were the fables of the grammarians and the poets than these snares? For verses and poems and the flying media are still more profitable truly than these men's five elements, with their various colours answering to the five caves of darkness, none of which exist, and yet in which they slay the one who believes in them. For verses and poems I can turn into food for the mind, for though I sang about the flying media, I never believed it, but those other things I did believe. Woe, woe, by what steps I was dragged down to the depths of hell, toiling and fuming because of my lack of the truth, even when I was seeking after thee, my God. To thee I now confess it, for thou didst have mercy on me when I had not yet confessed it. I sought after thee, but not according to the understanding of the mind, by means of which thou hast willed that I should excel the beasts, but only after the guidance of my physical senses. Thou wast more inward to me than the most inward part of me, and higher than my highest reach. I came upon that brazen woman devoid of prudence, who, in Solomon's obscure parable, sits at the door of the house on a seat and says, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. This woman seduced me, because she found my soul outside its own door, dwelling on the sensations of my flesh, and ruminating on such food as I had swallowed through the physical senses. Chapter 7 for I was ignorant of that other reality, true being. And so it was that I was subtly persuaded to agree with these foolish deceivers when they put their questions to me. Whence comes evil? And is God limited by a bodily shape? And has he hairs and nails? And are those patriarchs to be esteemed righteous who had many wives at one time and who killed men and who sacrificed living creatures? In my ignorance I was much disturbed over these things, and, though I was retreating from the truth, I appeared to myself to be going toward it, because I did not yet know that evil was nothing but a privation of good, that indeed it has no being. And how should I have seen this when the sight of my eyes went no further than physical objects, and the sight of my mind reached no further than to phantasms? And I did not know that God is a spirit who has no parts extended in length and breadth, whose being has no mass, for every mass is less in part than in a whole. And if it be an infinite mass, it must be less in such parts as are limited by a certain space than its infinity. It cannot, therefore, be wholly everywhere, as spirit is, as God is. And I was entirely ignorant as to what is that principle within us by which we are like God, which is rightly said in Scripture to be made after God's image. Nor did I know that true inner righteousness, which does not judge according to custom, but by the measure of the most perfect law of God Almighty, by which the mores of various places and times were adapted to those places and times, 
though the law itself is the same always and everywhere, not one thing in one place and another in another. By this inner righteousness, Abraham and Isaac, and Jacob and Moses and David, and all those commended by the mouth of God were righteous and were judged unrighteous only by foolish men who were judging by human judgment and gauging their judgment of the moors of the whole human race by the narrow norms of their own moors. It is as if a man in an armory not knowing what piece goes on what part of the body, should put a greave on his head and a helmet on his shin, and then complain because they did not fit. Or as if, on some holiday, when afternoon business was forbidden, one were to grumble at not being allowed to go on selling, as it had been lawful for him to do in the forenoon. Or again, as if in a house he sees a servant handle something that the butler is not permitted to touch, or when something is done behind a stable that would be prohibited in a dining-room, and then a person should be indignant that in one house and one family the same things are not allowed to every member of the household. Such is the case with those who cannot endure to hear that something was lawful for righteous men in former times that is not so now or that God, for certain temporal reasons, commanded then one thing to them, and another now to these. Yet both would be serving the same righteous will. These people should see that in one man, one day, and one house, different things are fit for different members, and a thing that was formerly lawful may become, after a time, unlawful and something allowed or commanded in one place that is justly prohibited and punished in another. Is justice, then, variable and changeable? No, but the times over which she presides are not all alike, because they are different times. But men, whose days upon the earth are few, cannot by their own perception harmonize the causes of former ages and other nations, of which they had no experience, and compare them with these of which they do have experience. Although in one and the same body, or day, or family, they can readily see that what is suitable for each member, season, part, and person may differ. To the one they take exception, to the other they submit. These things I did not know then, nor had I observed their import. They met my eyes on every side, and I did not see. I composed poems in which I was not free to place each foot just anywhere, but in one metre one way, and in another metre another way, nor even in any one verse was the same foot allowed in all places. Yet the art by which I composed did not have different principles for each of the different cases, but the same law throughout. Still, I did not see how, by that righteousness to which good and holy men submitted, all those things that God had commanded were gathered, in a far more excellent and sublime way, into one moral order. And it did not vary in any essential respect, though it did not in varying times prescribe all things at once, but rather distributed and prescribed what was proper for each. And, being blind, I blame those pious fathers not only for making use of present things that God had commanded and inspired them to do, but also for foreshadowing things to come, as God revealed it to them. <laughs>